Kaya, and hello to everybody in Perth, our D. Eve, Ochunta Chorchi and Aaron, hello from County Cork in Ireland, to everybody who is listening to this. Uh, delighted to be presenting at the ISOTL 2021 conference, an awful pity that we can't be there in person, but fantastic to have the opportunity nonetheless to uh, present through this platform. And I am representing the Elevate team at University College Cork, and our work is around experiential and immersive virtual learning in molecular and cellular biology, very much a virtual interactive partnership or experience with the students to clear the mist of these challenging concepts. And University College Cork, I believe, is the only, if not one of the only, universities in the world where the motto has teaching and learning together in the same sentence where Finbar taught, let Munster learn. And that's uh, a non-literal translation from the original motto, Unad Bara Skull Namun. And just to point down on the bottom left, you see a place called Gugan Bara, which was a small little cell that, that our chapel that uh, Finbar, St. Finbar used to inhabit. It is an absolutely uh, beautiful area of Cork and I would encourage you, if you are visiting, that you would take the opportunity to go there. So first, before we begin with the information, we start with a question. Have you ever found yourself in an art gallery and everybody around you is speaking about the beauty of a particular painting? They're talking about the strokes that the artist managed to create, the lines, the imagery, the color. And you're standing there, and as far as you're concerned, you're looking at the back of a painting, looking at the card upon which it is hung. You may be lucky, you may be one of those who can see a key where there's potential there to unlock the painting and all of its beauty and creativity, but that key remains stuck to the painting and hanging. That's the experience for a lot of students as they try to engage with molecular and cellular biology. It is abstract and invisible. There is no focal point for them through which to engage. And that's a challenge that we set about trying to, first of all, understand fundamentally and then to address in partnership with our student body here at University College Cork. And we were enabled in doing this through funding from the National Forum, which is our statutory body, in Ireland for the enhancement of teaching and learning in higher education. So first of all, we wanted the students to be able to explore as part of their experience. We wanted it to be interactive. They would use 3D models, work in groups, and use virtual reality, fully immersive or desktop. We were very keen on the concept of learning by doing this experiential learning so that students would have the, the opportunity to access micro modules they would get experience and operate through the medium of digitalization, that they would have multimodal entry points into their molecular and cellular biology experience, and very much that this is built within the connected learning curriculum at University College Cork. Put all that together, we would hope that we would enlighten the students, allow them to achieve deep and meaningful learning. It is, has to be an applied understanding. So all of this is linked into a capstone experience, a performance of understanding. All of that together will unlock the course potential. Just to give an, an idea of our journey, November 19 had begun. And uh, what's notable about that time is that COVID was not in our consciousness at that time. So all of this was designed and all of these concepts, the rationale, the raison d'etre for the work is not based on a reaction to COVID. In fact, it all happened in the six to nine months before COVID became part of our consciousness. We began with ethical approval. We then built into some pilot surveys and we worked with off the shelf simulations at that stage, uh, including Labster. And then moving into uh, July 2020, and this was a big shift or a big change uh, for us, where we engaged with students from multimedia and the master's course here at University College Cork, in particular, the, the, pro the program manager, uh, Dave Murphy from Maverick. This gave us access to graphic design. This gave us access to people who could turn our disciplinary expertise our vision for what a simulation should look like into a virtual reality. So this was a really exciting and transformative change for us. As a team, we were committed and very much committed to the pedagogy and that the teaching and learning was the foundation here. This experience, this work, 
The study was not built on the application of a technology. It was grounded in pedagogy, grounded in subtle, using technology as a, as a platform or framework. So the first uh, to develop was the viral virtual reality simulation, which was followed then by more student surveys uh, and off the shelf. And finally, with the molecular biology and cellular biology simulations developed in co-design with the students. And it's really important to note here the co-design elements. This was done in partnership with students. Students were involved in the crafting, students were involved in the testing, and students are involved in giving the feedback. So at all stages here, the students were partners in this. And that was a fundamental decision that we took from the outset. And I think one that proved to be very, very beneficial. We finished with our fully immersive virtual reality focus groups in May 2021. And just to point out that while this was all conceived and thought of, and the vision was there long before COVID ever uh, arrived, still to note that much of this work, most of this work indeed, was done under the highest levels of restrictions here in Ireland. So just a couple of things to note. One of the really important points is that students really were partners here. They were co-designers. They were co-researchers in this. Uh, we also note that we enabled the students to work in an interdisciplinary context. And that's really important because the research team itself, the Elevate team, was interdisciplinary by its very nature. So that was something that we wanted to extend to the students. Keen as well that they would have the ability to work in collaborative research, that they would work together in teams. A lot of that fed in as part of the capstone experience. But in time, that will also become a part of the fully immersive experience itself. And the idea that as part of one of the experiences that students would actually design, test and build, that there would be an interactive element where they would physically construct something. One of the modules that we chose to focus in on was uh, one that's taught by myself and uh, Dr. John Morgan. It is MB3006 and it is genetic engineering and molecular biotechnology. And you see the plasma there, which forms part of that. The core hypothesis we had was that immersive learning approaches can enhance the deep learning experience of students as they engage with challenging abstract concepts in molecular and cellular biology. So that immersive learning, experiential learning will open up a new way for students to engage in this topic. And particularly from the immersive approach, the ability for students to be in a space with a plasma can break that invisible, that abstract, that incoherence from a spatial context. Of course, first of all, we had to establish the fact that this is a problem. There's no point in us as researchers or as educators um, perceiving there to be an issue. We spoke to the students and found that there was. So when you look at molecular biology as challenging, up to 80% of respondents agreed with that. The same with computational biology. And when we asked why, they said the invisible nature of molecular biology makes it difficult to conceptualize, over 80% again. So almost unanimity. Uh, in saying that this is a challenge, this is abstract, this is a problem that we have. In using or thinking or conceiving of digitalization and immersive uh, technologies as a mechanism to address that, that teaching and learning need, we first then also had to understand, well, what's the background of students in this space? I mean, we would perceive or we would think that students are quite uh, competent in social media, and they are. The majority of students would have described themselves as uh, newbies or experienced. None of them said they had no experience. However, when it comes to virtual reality, a very different outcome there. Equal numbers almost describe themselves as either newbies or no experience. And the smallest group here were experienced. So clearly, if we're going to use virtual reality, engage students in uh, virtual reality as a learning tool, we also need to be mindful that they need the training to enable them to work through that medium. So a very simple prototype then in developing the concepts around um, what the experience, the virtual reality experience would look like. So how do you get students to engage and understand the plasmid? Okay, the plasmid is the foundation of recombinant DNA technology. It's how we make many of the proteins or drugs that are out there uh, on the market that are there in the clinics. If you look at some of the COVID vaccines, for example, they would be plasmid based. Okay, so absolutely fundamental to 
industry fundamental to research? How do we get students to understand plasmids, how they work, how they operate, when it is such an invisible entity? So the idea here was a very simple one. It was a blank jigsaw, uh, and we constructed the names of the plasmid entities around that circular red structure. So that's your plasmid. All of the jigsaw pieces that fit on that round circle are a part of the plasma component. And all of the other pieces in the jigsaw are part of the production line. They're part of the pipeline of recombinant technology, but not part of the plasmid itself. So students worked in groups to build these jigsaws. And the feedback from students was that it was very useful because for the first time, they'd actually mentally engaged with the plasmid and the physical, the interactive element of actually constructing the plasmid they found very, very useful and very, very helpful. So as a prototype, this gave us really good insight into what the virtual simulation would look like. And that virtual simulation, and it is multilingual. You will see here that uh, it's in the, the Gaelic language, the Irish language, but also available in English and, and Spanish. And it's, it's entirely multilingual, the platform to be rolled out. So in the first step, we need students to enter a space. So they're going through into a microscope just to bring them into that space where they could physically imagine that they have left their normal reality behind. Here in this case, you have the backbone of a plasmid. You have a number of pieces that will fit into that plasmid. You have uh, an origin of replication. You have a promoter. Each of those are part of the plasmid itself. You also have a number of fake pieces that are the correct size. They will fit in place. They are relevant to the whole process of recombinant technology or gene expression or you know the life science biology they're just not part of the plasmid so students have to discern that they have to pick the right parts if they don't pick the right parts they're brought back in to uh, repeat when they do complete the plasmid they're then into a series of mcq questions where they are based again on the plasmid structure they can click on all the various pieces and a question will come up on each one So just to take a look at what that experience looks like, and I have a point here to Christine Walsh, Grace McAvoy, and Billy O'Mahony, who are from the MSC Multimedia Program, and Billy, who was hired on the project, and they were instrumental in turning these storyboards, these visions that we had, uh, into reality, or virtual reality, as it were. Okay, so hopefully you are able to see this in progress. This is as you enter the Oculus Quest. And you then bring your plate over to the microscope. It allows you to enter that physical space with the plasmid where you are now at one. You can maneuver around, you can pick your various pieces. Some of those pieces will be the appropriate ones. They will fit. Others are fake pieces. They will still fit, but not be relevant to the plasmid itself. So as we keep working through original replication, and eventually the plasmid is constructed, and the last piece enters, you submit, and you've just created a recombinant plasmid. And that then brings true an animation, and this has been developed further, uh, at the moment into an interactive animation, but again, through the process of once you've introduced the plasmid, how do you get that into the cell factory, the production factory? And once you enter that production factory, you're into then a series of questions that are based on the production of the protein itself, or maybe the antibody that's been produced through this system. So the entire pathway is there, it's all built into the simulation, and students can do all of this on a desktop computer. They can do it in a fully immersive space in an Oculus Quest. So as part of this experience, as we said, we're very engaged and subtle in the scholarship of teaching and learning, and this work was all grounded in pedagogy and subtle. It's not technology driven. We're using technology from the feedback we've gotten as one mode of entry for students to engage with what we believe uh, are very challenging concepts. And we've published this roadmap um, in Frontiers in Virtual Reality in 2021. So it's open access. And we see very much at the beginning as an introductory experience, okay? And that introductory experience then moves to virtual reality experience, but it needs to be linked. 
And some of the feedback we got from students is that that virtual reality experience has to be scaffolded and linked and relevant to what's been covered in the lecture material, okay? Then you move from the virtual reality experience into the application of that knowledge. So you're building on the knowledge, you're building on the skills development towards this final capstone experience, this performance of understanding. And of course, there's feedback here because you, it's iterative. You don't get to the end and finish the process. It is an iterative co-design of the assessments. You're constantly taking student feedback, building that into the introductory experience, building that into the virtual reality experience. So very much here taking a longitudinal approach to the scholarship. We think the entry point to accessing knowledge is really important, it has to be universal. Very, very clear here on universal access for students. And when you move to virtual reality and universal design for learning, there are many, many challenges there. Uh, and challenges that need to be addressed and overcome. So we need multiple entry points to the technology for students. And we need to move beyond the test and score principle. This is about fostering understanding and deep learning, not simply transferring knowledge. We also need to see mental models challenged and rebuilt. Students don't have preconceived ideas around molecular biology or cellular biology. Nonetheless, they may have mental models that don't allow them to access the concepts or process the concepts in the correct way. So that needs to be challenged. Again, universal design for learning oriented. Very, very strong here at University College Cork and that there's a fantastic support team driving it and something we're very, very conscious of. Spatial is another part that needs to be considered and that it is student paced. Students can do this experience in their own time, in their own room. And that's something that's really important without fear of punishment. OK, so iterative, iterative development using student feedback as the primary driver for assessment design. And then finally, teacher led uh, individual face to face. You're not replacing the teacher here. The teacher is still an integral component of this and a focal point for what's happening. But students are partners in the design, partners in the development of this teaching modality. We see it as active learning, experiential learning, and that could be group or individual, either in the fully immersive space or on the desktop or in the capstone experience. And we're capturing that experience, that engagement, and developing the assessments far of and as learning. So in summary for that, we see this as universal. We see it as accessible. It's really important that it allows student-paced learning. We see it as an entry point to accessing the knowledge. We still need the traditional lectures. We still need the engagement with the, the teaching staff, with the researchers, with the disciplinary experts, but building on this core foundation of knowledge that students can now access through the immersive space. We can also build new mental models. There are great opportunities here to expand this beyond that we're looking at that currently. And the ability to get students to see multiple outcomes, to see connections across disciplines, across what they're being taught in the various modules. To do that, we need the building blocks. That is the scholarship expertise, the teaching for understanding in UDL. We need the support services and to work closely with disability support, with the library, with the virtual learning environments to create an integrated experience for students that is accessible. We need the disciplinary expertise. This is grounded in disciplinary expertise. That has to be foundational not driven by technology, not driven by uh, an abstract concept per se, but driven by the understanding from a disciplinary expertise. So an integrated curriculum, digital skills training, obviously from a module coordination perspective and in the development of the concepts that would be used here. We also need expertise from VR development. So from graphic design, from VR, the hardware, the web platforms, IT support. So very much a collaboration here in these building blocks. When we put those together to frame the concepts, it has to be scientifically accurate. We have to develop modes of assessment, modes of connecting and learning. From a VR perspective, we have to think about things like touch, spatial. I mean, what does a plasmid sound like when you click two parts together? It's never been heard. What would it sound like? What would a plasmid feel like if you were to touch it? These are new challenges for us to begin to, uh, to discern. But if we can do that, we can deliver a digitalized experiential learning with knowledge, new skills, new methods of engagement. We can bridge concepts, give applied learning and build towards this future of interdisciplinarity. To do that, you need a large network and this concept of a tree with roots 
and branches that spread out and engage. So developing new student and staff plans, looking at new modalities and students as independent learners, giving them ownership of their learning experience. Some of that will be virtual. Some of it will be still within the, the classical room, but maybe in a group setting. There'll be multimodal entry points. It's important to develop different me methods and mechanisms for students to engage with the knowledge. It again has to be grounded with deep learning, teaching for understanding, the idea of student paced yet guided by the instructional designer. And an immersive, active learning approach, learning by doing. To do this on your own would be difficult, so we reach out and work with colleagues across the university, and particularly through the graduate attributes and connected curriculum initiatives that were launched over the last few years at University College Cork, and through uh, colleagues in the National Forum and in industry and in the various societies who've been a great supporter of us over time. And of course, with the expertise in University College Cork, with the Centre for the Integration of Research, Teaching and Learning, CERTL, who've been so fundamental to uh, the success of this initiative. So just to mention the people who made all of this possible, we work collaboratively, collaboratively as a team. So Brian McSharry and uh, Martina Scallon, who both worked on the virology, uh, element of this, John Morgan, who worked with me on MB3006, and Niall O'Leary, uh, our colleague as well, who worked across the simulations and concept design. And Owen Jump from CERTL, Dave Murphy and Grace McAvoy, Christine Walsh and Billy O'Mahony from the Computer Science. Uh, all the anonymous students who were such an integral part of what we achieved over the last few years. And of course, the National Forum, Nybert, and again, CERTL with Brian Supple and Laura Lee. Thank you very much.